But uh, uh, still, the registration is uh, the conditions, and uh, please wait uh, five five minutes. Uh, we'll start at uh, nine forty for the welcome session. Right, a moment. There are still uh, uh, yeah, uh, already a time to start a welcome session, but uh, uh, now the registration is uh, still uh, working, so the, we will start at 9.40. Megoro-san, is it 9.40? Start at 9.40? Welcome session. The 9.40, five minutes. Please wait a moment.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Aizu Wakamatsu Fair the Lives, the Bushido and the uh, Tradition uh, in town. Uh, please give attention to a samurai in the town, downtown. If you meet samurai, please take a care cushion. <laughs> uh, exactly, like in current days, the real samurai does not exist. It's, it, if uh, you meet samurai, it may be uh, the visitor, it uh, wears the kimono, and that uh, uh, brings uh, some the, uh, replica uh, sword. <laughs> okay, uh, the, there are the very famous legends in this uh, area. The, you know the Tsurugajo Castle around here, and uh, there are the Byakotai. It's a very a little uh, samurai boy. It's protecting the town from the outside enemies. So that you uh, please enjoy the, uh, this uh, ostrich of the map in Aizu Wakamatsu, and again, welcome. Okay, uh, sorry, let's do, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Hiroshi Miura, is the representative director in the OpenStreetMap Foundation Japan, and uh, uh, take a role of moderator in this room today. Uh, today, there are so many mappers come from 26 countries and uh, about 200. Uh, the gatherings in Aizu Wakamatsu. <laughs> Here in the pink, uh, protect your uh, asset with yourself. Uh, because the, this place is a public uh, theater and uh, some citizens is bring come here. Uh, so the, we, the staff is the, uh, protect from the uh, uh, ordinary citizens, but uh, some people is uh, reused the same uh, buildings in the next to here, uh, that there are some the public city hall. So the pr pre protect yourself, you have the uh, brings. え、本日のスタッフについては、え、スタッフはこちらの、え、白いシャツと、え、青い、え、名札を下げています。え、わからないことがあれば、スタッフの方に、え、スタッフに、え、声をかけてください。え、スタッフ、the uh, lovers here that they uh, help you to if you have some uh, uh, the problem or some issues. え、ま、スタッフの中では、え、英語があまり得意でないか、ないものをいますので、え、なるべく簡易な英語で、え、会話していただければと思います。え、this uh, volunteer is the gathering from the the university students. And they are the try to volunteer for you, but uh, some is not good for the some communication, English communication. Please uh, the, the communication with some the open mind and easy to help the volunteers. え、特に私と、え、代表の私と、え、事務局長をしている井上、本当は今日ここに上がってもらう予定だったんですが、井上という2人はこちらのピンクの服を着ています。uh, and the uh, head leader is the Megoro-san, and Ikiya-san, you know Ikiya-san is very famous uh, member in the Fukushima, is wearing the, this uh, pink, we pink wear, but they are the uh, uh, leads this event. If you have some questions, and, uh, please ask, the, uh, 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 easy to mind, uh, ask the question with the Megoro-san. And uh, some volunteer may help the translation with Megoro-san. 本日会場内は全部屋でWi-Fiを提供しています。SSIDとパスワードをご利用ください。You uh, can use the public Wi-Fi here, and you can uh, use the this SOTM something, and the last, last line is something like a G or A, is, or, and uh, you can use the, this password, White Tiger. White Tiger is means the Byakotai, it's the uh, English name of the, this historical uh, samurai team name. え、本日イベントのハッシュタグはSOTMとなっています。え、ぜひソーシャルメディアなどで、え、情報共有をお願いします。盛り上げていっていただきたいと思います。え、2日目、デイ2には、え、2つのイベントを用意しています。え、We prepare the two social events that tomorrow. え、1つは、え、
鶴ヶ城敷地内での記念写真の撮影です。Uh, one is a, a group photo and、uh, in front of 鶴ヶ城 castle, very beautiful 鶴ヶ城 castle。19日8時半、朝の8時半に鶴ヶ城の方に集合をお願いします。Okay, please ask if you have some question. Please ask the volunteers to the fair is in front of Tsurugato Castle. もう一つ、ソーシャルイベントをご用意しています。懇親会をご用意しています。19日夕方18時、鶴ヶ城会館という建物で行いますので、皆さんぜひご参加ください。Uh, We have the a social event in the evening in tomorrow, and、uh, the place is to、uh, walk three minutes from here is a Tsurugajo Kaikan. And uh, uh, the volunteer is bring you to the, uh, the uh, event place.、Uh, and please ask the volunteer to bring you yourself to go to the Tsurugajo Kaikan. And、uh, tomorrow, Saturday, the evening, at six o'clock, Tsurugajo Hall. Uh, this place is mapped in the opposite, of course, open source map, and you can use a smartphone to search the Tsurugajo Karikan in the Maps Me or the application in the smartphone, and you can go there at the very exact place. Konkai no event of the Code of Conduct, Code of Kihan, ni Hijoni, Omokio, Oitimas, Jinshu, Danjo, Matawa, Shungi Shou, そういったものにですね、こだわらない平等な行動を皆さんにお願いしたいと思います。The police asked for the code of conduct, and we are very appreciate for the code of conduct, and we try to help everyone in the same treatment. And please help us to good, make a good event with code of conduct. アイズの古い言葉では、えー、ならぬことはならぬという言葉があります。Uh, the is very difficult. <laughs>、uh, in the traditional name,、uh, the word in Aizu Wakamatsu, ならぬことはならぬ in Japanese,、uh, that means no means no. アイズパーソンは、私たちの心を持っています。私たちの心を持っています。In other samurai, so the, the, the leader should say, I say no, it means no. <laughs> This is not a good man, it's not no, means no. Eh, Hapio Shano Katade, eh, present Shirio, or Mada Mites no Katawa, eh, Mr. Ida no Honi, eh, Tesu, or Negashimas. Uh, every presentation is played on the, this、uh, the PC. So we have set up this PC for the perfect conditions.、Uh, please that,、uh, give the, your presentation material to Mr. Ida, he's a, a wafku guy, <laughs> kimono guy, to the,、uh, and the, 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 before the presentation.、So、he set up the, the material in the, this,、uh, the best condition PC for you. それではこの3日間を最高なものにしていきましょう。ハバーマッピースリーデイズ。マッピースリーデイズ。サキベマス。会場の案内図を見てください。And a very uh, the important information for you, the bathroom. A bathroom is in front of this hall. Is that a bathroom is two places. The in front of here, go out here, and right side and left side in, in the entrance. 
uh, you can use uh, both sides for the uh, bathroom. And if you, uh, I don't know who used that, that but uh, uh, there are the, uh, the bathroom for the foil chair over there. Uh, please uh, take a, a bathroom near this main hall. And uh, another inf inf uh, important information for Tsurugajo. Uh, you uh, you uh, give, the, uh, sorry, the staff give you the, some Congress bag in the red bag over there. And please check this bag. And uh, you can find the, some small piece of the paper ticket. This paper ticket. This ticket is uh, the ticket for the invitation ticket for the Tsurugajo Castle for free. You may enjoy the Tsurugajo Castle with this ticket with, uh, without any uh, fees. Please check your Congress bag. Okay, the welcome session is uh, that's it. And, uh, if you have the questions, please ask the volunteers. And the uh, keynote is start 10 o'clock. Uh, please wait a moment. Thank you very much.
Uh, now, 10 o'clock, this is time to start the keynote, but uh, uh, we are uh, oh. preparing the presentation material for the, uh, just before for the keynote. Uh, please wait for the uh, finished uh, preparation of the key materials. Uh, before, uh, I'm sorry for the uh, wait for wait you to the keynote, and as for the uh, next time to enjoy, I'd like to the dance here. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not a pro dancer, so the, I just wait the dance. Yeah, I can't do the back ten. <laughs> More time. <laughs> uh, what to do? Is there any active? <laughs> uh, at the traditional at the Japanese a bon, bon dance here? This is bon dance. Uh, <laughs> and, mm, not really. Uh, the, now the uh, state of the map is uh, the 10th anniversary oh. in this time. And uh, uh, from the 2007 in the United Kingdom and uh, uh, here, uh, the eyes were come as the 10th uh, symposium in the worldwide streets. Uh, five years ago, we are welcomed in the state of the map in Tokyo, uh, just after the earthquake in Japan. And uh, here, eyes were come as is hit a very big earthquake. But there are no big problem here. OK. And uh, <laughs> as the set of Mark Conference 10th anniversary starts, as the keynote, Arun Ganesh, at the welcome, and uh, his map from India, and will uh, present for the uh, keynote. The welcome, Gan, Arun. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Konnichiwa. Good morning, everyone. And uh, yeah, it's been great to be back in Japan. Uh, I was here two years ago at Hamamatsu. Uh, and oh, I'm still having some issues with the internet.
Yeah, so sorry, last minute internet glitches. Can you just give me two minutes? Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's been great to come back here and especially talk at uh, State of the Map. Uh, it's always a beautiful gathering of uh, all mappers from around the world. We are connected by this thing called the map. And uh, I think the amazing thing is all the stories we bring here from the different parts of the world. And uh, sharing that with each other, inspiring each other, and seeing what we are building with uh, this project called the OpenStreetMap project and uh, where it's taking us. So. Uh, I'm going to share my story, like what, what is my connection with the map, and uh, why am I here? Uh, so in, in 1997, uh, I went on a family trip uh, to London. Uh, and over there, I was 10 years old. And uh, an amazing thing there was the tube map in London. What happened is uh, I was given this map uh, by my family, and uh, it was very intuitive for me to just navigate around, and I was the navigator for the family, telling everyone which line to take to which part of the city. Uh, and it was amazing. At 10 years old, I felt empowered, and uh, I realized the value of a diagram. And since then, I've always been thinking, in my own country, in India, we don't have information to get around places. It's very difficult to move around uh, if you're not from there. And why don't we have this in India? Uh, how to make such diagrams and such maps for India. And this is what has been driving me since uh, I was a small child. My name is uh, Arun Ganesh. Uh, on the internet, I go by the user name PlaneMat, uh, even on the OpenStreetMap project. Uh, I joined the OpenStreetMap project in uh, 2007. Uh, and it's been over 10 years now. And been contributing uh, in open knowledge projects like Wikipedia, Wikidata, and OpenStreetMap since then. Uh, PlaneMat. The background behind that is uh, my interest in flight simulator. Uh, so I used to use a lot of flight simulator and was mad about it. I got more involved into creating scenery and objects for flight simulator. And uh, this was 10 years ago. There was a tool called AFCAD to model airports and diagrams. Very much like Jossum, but 10 years back. And uh, it gave me an understanding of how to model the real world in a computer. Uh, soon I learned about graphic software like Illustrator, and uh, I started trying out creating tube maps, London-style tube maps for my own city, which is uh, in South India. Uh, it's called Chennai, uh, a small city of 10 million people, and uh, which has no maps at all for anything, for buses, for trains. There's no maps anywhere. And I started experimenting creating maps. And this is my first map that I made, which is just dots uh, and roads and uh, location of bus routes, which I would go on the bus and collect myself. Uh, I started getting better. I started creating more transit maps uh, for different cities in India and started uploading everything to Wikipedia so more people can access it and uh, use it. Uh, and this became very useful for many people around the world because there was no existing map like this for India anywhere. Uh, very soon, I started creating a whole set of maps on Wikipedia with a standard way of representation and cartography. Uh, and I started to learn how to do cartography, how to design maps, and uh, uh, how to model data. And uh, the set of maps that I made on Wikipedia over uh, two years, in 2006 and 2007, over 200 maps, helped define the cartographic standard on Wikipedia as well, on how locator maps should be, what color should be used. 
but the one problem was it was very hard to update. So each of these maps were created in SVG uh, and downloaded and uploaded separately to Wikipedia. And India is a country which changes very often. New districts are formed, uh, places keep changing names all the time, new roads are formed. And there was no easy way for me to update all the maps. Uh, and then I realized I can't be doing this. Uh, there must be some other way to make maps. And through Wikipedia, I learned about a project called the OpenStreetMap Project, which said editable word map. And I thought, wow, this is exactly what I want. Uh, so I clicked on the website, and I went to India uh, on this project called OpenStreetMap in 2007. Uh, very excited with what was there. This is what I found. <laughs> so this is OpenStreetMap in 2007 uh, in India. Uh, I zoomed into my city. <laughs> there was nobody there. And I didn't understand what this was about. Uh, this is a huge country with so much of data, and uh, but there was nothing here. So is this really for India? What, what is this project about? Uh, there was a button called Edit. I clicked on it, and it said something like Potlatch. It, there was no documentation how to use it. Uh, the imagery was very blurry, but I started clicking and just drawing uh, whatever I could. Uh, but the real thing, what happened is uh, I met passionate people who knew about OpenStreetMap, and I was lucky to meet them in India. Uh, so on the left is Mikhail Marin. Uh, he is one of the board members of uh, OpenStreetMap Foundation, and Skylar Earl, who was one of the early uh, persons who wrote libraries for using OpenStreetMap. Uh, and they were speaking about OpenStreetMap in different parts of India. And I was in a neighboring city. I came, listened to them. And then I was convinced there are real people and this is a real project. Uh, I found the manual, the wiki. It was hiding in a link. And uh, then I started understanding what was there, how to use OpenStreetMap. And I started mapping my hometown. Uh, so this was. What you see there in 2007 was uh, my neighborhood where I used to live. Uh, and I started drawing the first roads. And over the next three years, would go to the city office, get paper maps from them, use it as a reference, and uh, largely map most of my city over uh, two, three years when I was in college. And uh, this was amazing to see, like how, uh, and especially the visual feedback. And uh, as someone who's been drawing in uh, graphic software and then finally seeing such detailed maps like this, I was amazed. I wanted to do more of this. Uh, I had to document the process to help other people as well, and wrote in the wiki how roads in India are, because there's no information about any of this anywhere. Uh, and then just started doing it all over the country, uh, year after year. And uh, for me, as someone from Wikipedia, there's a concept called creating stubs, where you create a small sentence, and over time, people just start filling in the gaps. And that's what happened over the last 10 years, that there's so many people now who have started filling in the gaps of different places. And uh, all it requires is some seed data. Put the name of the location, have some forests, have some rivers, have the major highways. And then people start filling out everything else. Uh, this got a lot of attention in India. And uh, I spoke about it a lot, what OpenStreetMap is, to gain awareness, to let other people also start filling in the blanks. Uh, and I was convinced that crowdsourcing works, that as something which was completely blank, there's so much of data coming in. Me and my friend, we created a site to crowdsource uh, bus information for my city. And in 2008, made the first bus route maps of any place in India. Uh, all of this was using OpenStreetMap as a base map. The whole software was open source. Uh, and this was for the first time uh, my city had bus route maps. The government website today still does not have maps. And we managed to crowdsource it 10 years ago. And I realized all this opens up amazing possibilities that uh, just by doing these simple things, I didn't have any money. I didn't know coding. Uh, but just by spending little time and having an idea, there were so many things that could be done. And uh, new ways to look at the world itself. Using the crowdsourced information from bus transit, uh, made visualizations which was used in studies of 
where the gaps are in the bus networks in my city. Uh, and me and my friends proposed to the city to use OpenStreetMap and information for the public in the bus stops. Uh, because there was no maps available of any other kind for the city. And as we were doing this, all along the way, there were amazing people everywhere. And these were people who were very different, who always questioned the status quo. Uh, this is one of the first meeting of people interested in OpenStreetMap in India 10 years ago. Each one of them have done amazing things in life. Uh, they have won awards, they have done research, have, fighting for internet freedom, fighting for tribal rights. And for me, I was interested in using the data for good maps, good applications for, uh, for others to use uh, in my country. Uh, making all of this taught me design. Uh, I eventually went to design school, and at the interview there, when they saw all the maps I'd made, uh, they didn't even ask me any questions. I got in very easily. And soon I learned uh, that maps are more than just beautiful graphics. Uh, in Mumbai, uh, during the first Wikipedia conference, uh, Jimmy Wales got into trouble because people in India said the maps of India on Wikipedia were wrong. And uh, then I learned that this is serious, that these are not just graphics on the internet, these are real things which are political, which causes, uh, which causes real problems between people. And uh, there were two things which happened. One is I stopped making maps for Wikipedia, uh, knowing that this is not, uh, I could, this is uh, not so easy for me and it's not uh, like a simple thing anymore. And uh, another interesting thing which happened because of this is uh, I was moved out of the conference in Bombay and went to a hackathon where uh, I got to meet the Wikipedia designer and proposed uh, a map-based interface for picking languages in Wikipedia. This was called the Universal Language Selector. Uh, and later, I, was, I ended up as a contractor in the Wikimedia Foundation to help implement and develop this. And this is right now uh, what you see in all the MediaWiki websites to change your language from English to any other language. Uh, and it's amazing what a map can drive one person to do uh, and just takes one to different places. And you just end up doing interesting things. Uh, I learned maps are political, uh, but then the data is not. Data is factual, it represents uh, what is there on the ground. And for me, I realized the future is data-driven decisions, that uh, if we really have to make meaningful decisions uh, in future about the environment, about our planning, uh, we need to have it based on data. And in that context, OpenStreetMap is a huge opportunity for uh, a, for a better future, for all of us to make meaningful decisions for a better future. Uh, there were core principles that I firmly believed in, that being open was better than being closed, and then doing things together is better than doing things alone. And uh, open data and OSM is something which implements that in real life. Uh, OpenStreetMap is more than just a map, it's the data. And not many people know about this looking at the OpenStreetMap website, that they just see the colors, but nobody knows about the data behind it. And that all this data is open and free for any of these amazing possibilities. Uh, and it's happening today. Uh, because of all the tools, because of all the awareness, OpenStreetMap is spreading to so many places and for so many applications, there is so many different uses of cartography, of visualizing uh, cities in different ways, uh, of creating base maps for putting information on top and interacting with them, uh, for navigation and analysis, to do route optimization. And we see this now in every cab operator who's all trying to be more efficient with how they travel and save fuel. For gaming, for creating virtual worlds based on the real world. We saw how it was done in Pokemon Go for AR, VR applications. This is pretty amazing. This is uh, on a tabletop surface. So it's augmented reality with uh, cars using the OSM data and navigating around. For humanitarian response, and we know how much this has helped. This is for malaria mapping, and people all over the world are mapping buildings. And this data is being used to estimate how much material needs to be used for spraying to eradicate mosquitoes 
uh, where to distribute resources. And such data is not available anywhere else but on OpenStreetMap today. OpenStreetMap is going everywhere. Uh, this is OpenStreetMap in use in Snapchat. And uh, don't know how popular Snapchat is, but there are millions, hundreds of millions of users of Snapchat, and they're all using OpenStreetMap to see where people are active and snapping from. And this opens up OpenStreetMap to a whole new world, which we have never known before, as those who have come into OpenStreetMap from the starting. We are only known as mappers and geeks, and only the technical people know about it, but everyone today is using OSM. Today, OSM is larger than ever before. Uh, to understand the data, there is, the data is made up of four billion geographic points, and it's growing every single day. Those four billion points have come from close to a million unique contributors from around the world. And over 36% of them have over 100 edits, so it's not just people who are making one change and going away. The number of active users is growing every single day, and it is growing at exponential rate. And it's just the starting. We see how it was slow, and in the recent years, it's growing more and more. And there's a lot of reasons for this. OSM is being used a lot more than it was before. Uh, it's become easier to edit OpenStreetMap through different editors. Uh, and there's a lot more applications using this data. There's more than 100 million people using applications or maps based on OpenStreetMap today. Uh, this is very hard to calculate, uh, but a large part of this comes from the statistics we know from uh, at Mapbox, where I work, that we make applications and having users, and all the different applications made with OpenStreetMap. So there's already so much data. Uh, how much more is there to map? How much more data do we need? This is what the data density in OpenStreetMap looks like today. And you can see how the brightest areas are in Europe and in Northeast USA and in Japan. These are one of the most uh, richest places in the world. And this is where the most data is. But this is not where the most people is. If you just look at Eurasia, there's only less than a billion people in Europe. There's only 100 million people in this side of the world. But in the places where half the world lives, in Africa, in South Asia, there's hardly any map data. This is a map of all the named roads in the world. And here again we see how the data is concentrated in US and Europe. And the rest of the world is blank. It's still left to be mapped. Without roads having names, how do you navigate? And the planet changes every second. The world is changing every moment, and the maps have to keep updating. Uh, this is a recent uh, ice shelf that broke off in Antarctica last and sea, which was huge. And this was updated almost in real time on OpenStreetMap and on no other map. The way we're getting data is changing. Uh, this is an amazing demonstration from Mapillary, who's capturing, uh, who's crowdsourcing street level imagery, where from images you can figure out the position on the map. So there's exciting tools coming out and data coming out which can enable us to map in much more detail than ever before. And if when you think about it, 10 years back we were mapping around with GPS points and nothing more. If we had to trace a building, we had to walk around with the GPS around the building. And I know many of you here have done that. And it's driven by applications of the future. Uh, this is again augmented reality, which uses OpenStreetMap data to put a virtual object on top and drive around. And there's a new world of contributors opening up. There's new parts of the world which is getting internet access. There's new parts of the world which is getting mobile devices and devices to contribute. And this is the world that we haven't seen yet. The only world we have seen in OpenStreetMap is mainly those from Europe and US and Japan. Uh, but Asia, China, Africa, it's just starting. 
So this is where we are today. We are just starting to grow, and the project is just beginning to take off. We are seeing real-world applications. And it's amazing when we think, where is it going to go? And are we ready? Do we have the tools? What is the community support going to be like? And for OpenStreetMap, the community has always been the foundation for having the growth, to be able to allow newcomers to come in, to help them out, to build the tools necessary. And now we are going to be seeing a future where there's going to be so many new people coming in that is the community going to sustain itself for expanding for this community? The community is made up of amazing people, and this is what we need. We need communities which are resilient uh, in terms of any crisis. This is the Kathmandu Living Labs uh, folks in Nepal, and during the earthquake uh, that happened two years back, there was no internet access, the structures were damaged, but still they were mapping to help their people out. And they were coordinating the humanitarian response on OpenStreetMap and connecting it with the real world to actually make an impact on the ground. This is the kind of communities we need. And for me, I have been building my own mapping community, uh, a professional one. Two years ago, I was uh, invited by a company called Mapbox to form a team to map on OpenStreetMap. And for me, as someone who's been contributing to OpenStreetMap for the last 10 years, my first step was how to build a community at Mapbox which can contribute to OpenStreetMap and support the larger community. And this is what we have been doing for the last two years. We have fetched over 1.8 million features around the world. This is a map of all our edits just in the last one year. And we're trying to scale the community by building open resources, which is copyright free and available for anyone. Our documentation is public domain. And the amazing thing is then the community comes and starts translating into different languages. The Japanese community have translated all the documentation in Japanese and is there now live. And building tools for the community, which wasn't possible with the resources that was available, that we can put engineers and work on it on a very short time scale and build uh, amazing tools. I think everyone has a role in OpenStreetMap. Uh, citizens. Like all of us, volunteer citizens, nonprofits, for profits, government, academia. And they have so many activities to do. Uh, it's not just the mappers who are in OpenStreetMap, there's a whole world and ecosystem around it. Today, there's huge names tied with OpenStreetMap, like the Wikimedia Foundation, and a lot of nonprofits and for profits who are really taking OpenStreetMap and building it with so many other applications around the world. And it all rests on us that each one of us who are here are part of the system. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, last year when Catherine Maher from the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation uh, spoke at SOTM US, she was speaking about how we have to build communities and how they're building a strategic roadmap for the vision of the Wikimedia Foundation, which is today one of the largest open knowledge projects in the world. And today, their strategic vision is to become the roads, bridges, and villages that support the world's journey towards free knowledge. The metaphor that they're using is a map. And this is where maps fit in. The maps is what is connecting everything that's there in the world today. And in Wikimedia Foundation, there's an amazing project called Wikidata, which is a structured database. And just connecting OpenStreetMap and Wikidata together, you can start seeing interesting applications. This is translation of the world map which uses the translations from Wikidata, which has a larger language community than OpenStreetMap has. We need to grow. We are just starting, and we have just started mapping. And mappers in Europe will tell you Europe has mapped, but it's not true. And if you, and if you just think that even Europe has not mapped, the rest of the world, they've not even started. We need to grow rapidly. We need to grow so much. And the biggest reason, at least for me to do that, is to help us for tomorrow. This is an example of an application that was built using OpenStreetMap by me and a few of my colleagues uh, when there was floods in my city two years back. And there was no information or tools available anywhere to help figure out where the floods were happening and how to help. So we made a simple tool. Uh, it just took us one day to build. 
And we could do this because the map data was already there on OpenStreetMap. And it was interesting for me because I had contributed to this map data 10 years ago. And we built a simple tool for people to report which streets of the city were flooded. And they just had to zoom in and click on the map. And it became so popular in those 10 days of flooding, this tool had 1.2 million hits. I think it's important to remember why do this. We need to be open. We need to go beyond borders. We need to accept everyone in the world. And most importantly, we need to have fun doing this, which is why all of us are here. I, in OpenStreetMap, at gatherings like this in State of the Map and spreading the word about this amazing project. Yeah, start contributing today. You can do it very simply by just going to OSM and mapping your particular home. And then sharing your story. And this is what I'm doing. And this is exactly what we do with everyone who joins my team at Mapbox as well. This is my story, and looking forward to hearing yours. I got to go some us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron. And uh, uh, if you have questions, please ask questions in the, the uh, lobby in, in the uh, free time. And then uh, the next, we have the breakout sessions. Uh, there are two conference rooms here and room number one in front of in this floor, in the front of the uh, sponsors' booth. Uh, the please check your uh, handy program book. Harry Potter book and the smartphone, the, uh, the application for the program, uh, determine the room. Uh, there are very short between sessions. Please take care time in your uh, self to catch uh, your favorite sessions. In this room, the uh, next session is uh, uh, by uh, Jun Megro, OSM Fukushima, the title uh, OSM in Aizawa City. A construction of hazard map. In the room one, the another room is by uh, Taro Matsuzawa, the Joe Republic from Joe Republic, uh, titled Mobile Application Development with Routing and Voice Navigation. In the room one, the room one is in front of the opposite side of the uh, sponsor's booth. Uh, there are two breakout sessions. Here is uh, Jun Meguro. Do you have already? Mm, not so. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'd like to some announcement. I'm sorry the uh, Wi-Fi connection is not good in, in the keynote sessions. The Yamori-san technology staff is the emergency to uh, prepare the new antenna here so that you may find yourself to connect very good. Uh, thank you very much for the Miyamori-san for the uh, technical 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 support on this uh, conference. Okay, the so Megro-san, are you ready? The, uh, yep. the title is OSM in Aizawa City, construction of hazard map. Uh, OSM Fukushima. Today, I will report on the activities of community of Fukushima and the uh, utilization of OpenStreetMap in Aizawa Kamatsu City. I started mapping around Aizawa Kamatsu City and other areas in Fukushima Prefecture in 2010. Now, I'm participating in the community group OSM Fukushima, and I continue to work with my colleagues. And I'm also a uh, staff of Aizawa Kamatsu City Hall. At first, let me show you uh, some activities of OSM Fukushima. This is a picture of a uh, mapping party. There are many historical sites and nature in Aizawa Kamatsu City. We will mapping these all. This is uh, making a uh, open street map birthday cake in 2011. Uh, I eat meat. Uh, Peach is 
uh, most presentative fruits of Fukushima. Uh, this is a 3D mapping of Aizu Wakamatsu. Uh, this is a Tsurunajo Castle presentative uh, historical site of Aizu Wakamatsu. 1590, Gamo Ujisato, the Temple of Aizu, uh, completed building castle. But it was destroyed the Boshin Civil War 150 years ago, and it rebuilt in 1945. If weather fine tomorrow, I'll all take photograph at there. And this is an old, old funny building called Sazaedo. The internal passageway have double, double spiral structure. If you want to watch this tower, it's located historical site uh, west of the city called Imoriyama. Please visit it because it's truly funny building. It's a, a map, photo mapping on Mapillary. Uh, more than 1.9 million photos were taken by members. And it's a uh, uh, two, 2008 of the state of Fukushima Prefecture. A uh, few, few highways in the prefecture in only only this, this way. And it's uh, 2009, and now it's uh, uh, currently, currently state of uh, Aizu Wakamatsu city. Uh, buildings, roads, and many POIs are made by uh, members. Through these community activities, the map data in Fukushima was very fulfilling. One year after I started OSM activities, a major disaster occurred in Japan. On March 11, 2011, a big earthquake of magnitude 8 hit the Tohoku region. And the Fukushima prefecture and the Pacific coast of Tohoku district uh, greatly damaged by the tsunami. And the nuclear accident occurred after the earthquake. A lot of regions evacuated due to this accident. However, the ice area was far from coastal areas. Because of that, ice was uh, able to avoid direct damage of earthquake and the tsunami. But Aizu Wakamatsu city may also encounter various disasters. One of, one of the dangerous disasters is debris flow. A uh, lot of rain, uh, heavily uh, rain softens the soil of the slope. The softer slope collapses, uh, soil, stone, and trees become a muddy flow. Debris flow occur everywhere in Japan mountains. Just like those, the ice basin is also surrounded by mountain areas. Another one disaster is the uh, flooding of rivers. There are Angangawa River and many other rivers in the ice basin. When it rained heavily, heavily river may destroy the embankment of embankment and flood. Let's see a map of ice basin. Uh, mountains area and large rivers are gathered in the basin. To inform citizens to, of uh, danger of this disaster is very important to reduce the damage. If citizens can run the danger of their residences, they will be able to carry out the evacuation, evacuation action faster. So Aizu Wakama City has uh, created hazard maps several times before, and 
distributed it to citizens. In 2014, I enrolled in the disaster prevention section in Aizawakama City Hall. At that time, I was entrusted with a mission to recreate all the hazard maps. The hazard map that we used until, used until then have had several problems. Uh, it must update disaster information and update buildings and highways and enable, enable city hall staff to manage hazard map. Uh, disaster information and roads and buildings will continue to change. No order to respond quickly to these changes and update the hazard map Staff need to be able to manage a hazard map. As soon as I worked in the subject, I noticed a certain point. That means I should use OpenStreetMap. Uh, let me show, let me explain why I thought that OpenStreetMap is the best choice. The first point is that we can freely distribute the map we created. There were several, several map providers in Japan, but uh, the map data provided companies have very high quality, but we have to wait to the next year to get the budget and use it. This hinders the free, co free distribution of maps. And one uh, geographical survey institute, uh, national in institution, also provides uh, high quality maps with free charge. But when distributing their map, we need to obtain permission each time. We were seeking a map that can be dis distributed freely. On the other hand, uh, OpenStreetMap can distribute the created map freely. It only requires a copyright notice. The second point is the uh, user can obtain the source data and design the map. OSM displays the beautiful map on the web page and we can view and print it. But a uh, more wonderful use is to download and process the source data of the map. An object in the data contains a tag indicating the type of the object. For example, example uh, buildings, roads, forests, rivers, and so on. We highly appreciate that GIS can understand these objects and uh, apply styles and design them. The third point is that city staff can participate in creating maps. The community activities of Fukushima are powerful, but if the city staff puts the city-owned data into OpenStreetMap, the city can create a more accurate map. Actually, I got a drawing of the elementary school, actually, elementary school, which was recently built, and entered it into OpenStreetMap. And uh, it is reflected also in the hazard map. And I explained my data, my idea to my boss. And my boss just asked, asked a few questions and allowed me to make OSM hazard map. Well, the policy to use OSM for base map has been decided. Next is the acquisition of disaster data to be put on the base map. 
the Fukushima Prefectural Government created a CD-ROM storing sediment-related disaster data and uh, uh, distributed it to the municipalities of, in Fukushima Prefecture. Next, we got data on the river flooding area from the website of Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. And we decided to use uh, SRTM mission data distributed by NASA for elevation data. This is a laser measurement of the Earth's surface from the uh, space shuttle. It's a laser image, a raster image of containing altitude, altitude information with an uh, actuary of 30 meters. I converted it to the contour using the QGIS plugin. And I integrated the collected data using QGIS. Uh, QGIS is a high performance GIS that has been developed open source and it's distributed with free. And it has all the functions of hand, hand uh, geog geographic data. Uh, Outputted Particularly uh, wonderful, QGIS can export PDF as vector format uh, data. Uh, Output uh, PDF was very high quality and we were able to see all buildings even to the scale of uh, one per 13,000. This is a river flooding area and uh, sh shelter and public facilities. And this is a uh, image of uh, hazard map. So the hazard map is completed and we distributed uh, 50,000 hazard maps to create it from OpenStreetMap to all households in Aizu-Wakamatsu city. Hazard maps were also distributed to comp companies and organization, organizations. Currently, I left uh, disaster section, but the uh, successor continues to manage the hazard map. Uh, recently, a new version of hazard map has been created. And after distributing the hazard map, I wanted to uh, return the acquired skills of community activities. So we decided to create a hazard map of Aizu Misato town in the vicinity of Aizu Wakamatsu city. So we started mapping the building and, uh, and the road. Uh, about a week, we spent uh, thousands of buildings and roads uh, into place. And in the same way as the uh, hazard map of Aizu Wakamatsu city, we made a hazard map of Aizu Wakamatsu, Aizu Misato town. This community activities was appreciated and we received a small prize in the open data contest that sponsored by Aizu Wakamatsu City. The exper uh, uh, experience of creating hazard map has changed the mind of Aizu Wakamatsu City Hall staff. Uh, this April, uh, Aizu Wakamatsu City hosted a uh, mapping event for children and is promoting, promoting the use of OSM. Uh, the children experienced mapping and they created a map of 
their school. This is a uh, elementary school that uh, they school map and children made it. Uh, well, the OpenStreetMap community mapped everything in Aizuwakama City. So Aizuwakama City Hall was able to create a free, free hazard map. I think that it is an amazing archivement. And today, SOTM was held in Aizuwakamatsu. And we were able to uh, report our effort in front of you. I will continue to make OpenStreetMap wonderful through community activities. And I want to provide free maps to our society. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we have more time, and if you have a question, please raise a hand. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to bring a mic for you. Thanks. Uh, we have heard a lot about OSM Fukushima, and it has very active and similarly big community. Are there any other uh, active community in Japan that are of this size and or maybe visible locally, besides Fukushima? Uh, the question is, uh, uh, is there any other big community in Japan under its size? Is it the えっと、大勢福島ってすごく<笑><笑><笑> Hi, hi, I'm Yasunari. And, uh, tomorrow at uh, uh, 2 p.m., I introduce my mapping party in Kyoto, uh, Tokyo. Please come here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are so many regional communities in Japan, and uh, <coughs> the community is, is. Oh, this one. I thank you very much. Really um, interesting presentation. Um, so my question is on the decisions that you can now make or the, the, your successors in the disaster management um, authority can now make because you have the data that you have in terms of things like um, particularly vulnerable uh, people and access to shelter, um, you know, population estimates, those kinds of elements. Um, if you could um, let us know what kinds of uses you can, your department can now make of this data. Please again. Sorry. Slowly. Okay. Um, Thanks again. Um, uh, so the data that you've com completed um, and have made maps, how do you use that data to make decisions and to um, inform your communities beyond the paper map? <laughs> あの、素晴らしく地図を作りました。で、えっと、どのように地図をあの、使うことをその紙のマップじゃなくて、オプションマップを使うことで、えっと、コミュニティえっと、え、コミュニティをその形作るようにしたのか。Does anyone help for me?
を教えてくださいという。あの髪の,あの肌、えっと、あれ、聞いてないかわからないですけど、髪のマップを超えて、そのオープンシルマップを使うことで、そのコミュニティ1、コミュニティ作っていって、いったそのどうやってそのコミュニティを作っていったのか、まだどういうふうに活用していくのか。質問はい、えっとですねあの地図を超えた部分であのこう情報はどう生かされてますかであの主にこう意思決定にあのあのこうまつわるこう情報源としてどのようにあのこうあのこうデータが使われてますかっていう質問。まあ、特に防災関係ですよねだからまあ地図こう,こういうあのハザードマップだよっていうところ以降そこから先どういうふうに使われてるかっていうのが質問です。あしゃべってもいいですか日本語で。<笑>えー、市役所市の町内で。全常的に使っている GIS があるんですがそこに定期的にオープンストリートマップのデータを取り込むようになっていましてでそれがですね全常的に使えるようになっていますでこれがこれがっていうのはちょっと今パッと出ないんですが全職員がオープンストリートマップのデータを使ってそこにデータを重ねてでさまざまな行政上の判断に使える体制というのは作っています。Okay, so I guess、uh, the first thing is that、um, data that they build is、uh, fed back into the、um, internal system for the city. So all、um, city、um, workers uh, uh, can have access to the data. I guess that's it. Okay. Thank you. Now, okay, it's time to、uh, do the next session. If you have more questions, please ask the Cesar in the、uh, tea time.、Uh, thank you very much, Jim Meguro san. Uh, before starting the next session, the, we have announcements. And, uh, there are the other uh, uh, breakout room in the room three and six is the BOF session. And if you have some、uh, the theme to talk as a BOF, the, the registration whiteboard in, the, in front of the、uh, sponsor booth. Uh, you, uh, if you are interested in the BOF, Please check the whiteboard in front of the、uh, sponsor booth. The next session is uh, how uh, by uh, uh, Anisa Kushi the op by from Open Labs is、uh, titled How to Build Up an Opus OSM Community. And room one session talking with the map is the program is changed.、Uh, please check whiteboard to the、uh, new program. And as an announcement, if you want to, if you are a speaker and you want to check the, your presentation,、uh, please、uh, check after this session in the coffee time. Anissa, please. Thank you. Welcome, Anissa.
Okay. Hello, everyone. So, first of all, do you know where Tirana is? Albania? How many of you do you know Albania? Okay, perfect. I'm from Tirana, Albania, and uh, even though you can't really spot on the map, this is how the buildings look in Tirana. <laughs> so I think Tirana must be one of the most colorful cities, probably in Balkans or maybe Europe. So I'm a Mozillian. I'm an Open Labs board member, which is in Hackerspace based in Tirana. And of course, I'm an OpenStreetMap contributor, and that's why I'm here. So how many of you do you know this guy? Okay, <laughs> so Albania used to be uh, in, under communism for around 50 years, and he's our ex-dictator. And being under communism means that uh, we're like a totally isolated place, and we had no relation with other countries besides Soviet Union, and we're a super close society, which means that uh, we had no idea of how a community was. We had just a role model that was given to us by the communism, the dictator, and we didn't really know how a real community was. And volunteering was not volunteer, which means that people were forced to do things or to work in communities and collaborate, and they didn't get to choose if they wanted to do or not. So, revolution, came, people brought revolution, and we have democracy. Actually, wind of change came pretty quick, and people were not really prepared for the change and for the new tasks and this new ideology. So we went from forced collaborative work to real volunteer. And actually, to be honest, I think that the only real volunteer work that Albanians did all together was throwing the ex-dictator <laughs> statue. <laughs> And we went from extreme collective work to extreme individualism. And people were all thinking uh, about owning or creating their private property. And after like a long time being forced to collaborate with each other, the, the last thing they were thinking was creating a community. They were only thinking about themselves and nothing else. So. In the beginning, uh, we thought that it would be really easy uh, for a place like Albania with a cultural background and this history to create communities and to make people engage or to, to make them come and join communities. Not only OpenStreetMap community, but also open source communities. But actually it was quite the opposite because people were scared and they thought it was a trap and didn't really want to, to, to join. So in the beginning, when Open Labs Hackerspace was created, there were like around four to five people contributing, contributing in it. And it was real, really hard to get people to, to come and engage and join the community because they felt like we were trying to, to push them to work for free for every day or they were not convinced or they were scared that it was not really volunteer work, but they were obligated to do things. They were scared and it's not their fault. So based on our experience uh, in creating a community, we have, I have some tips that probably are going to, to fit really good on how to create a health community. So first of all, I think that physical space it's really important. Maybe you have communities in your places, but it's not the same communicating in mailing lists, in forums, or, or just also Twitter, also Twitter or social media. It's different when you have these persons that you are in the same community and work in the same space with them and know them or meet them in person. And it's really easier to interact with them and create a good vibe. So another tip is regional cross-border collaborations. It's really important that with other communities close to your country, you have good collaborations, you have like strong connections with them and have mutual events or work with each other. 
And it's really important to be very careful between paid staff and volunteers. This is really sensitive. As long as you have people that do almost the same things or work in a project and some of them get paid and some don't, it's really important to have a balance between them because it's, going, it's really sensitive. You shouldn't demotivate people that are volunteering in these kind of projects. Well, no gender balance, no community. This is a really important tip to have a healthy community. I'm going to give an example. So if you go in a community and you have 20, like a girl goes into a community, wants to join, and there are 20 male contributors or developers or mappers, is she going to feel as comfortable as if she joins a community with 10 male and 10 female contributors? I think she's going to feel, to feel more comfortable when there is a balance in this community. So there are great resources out there like Wiki. In our community in Albania, every event we do, everything we do, it's documented in a Wiki page. We update it all the time and every information is there. And it's a really good way of documenting what you do in your local community. So I highly recommend it. Localization or just some tea or pizza. <laughs> so uh, mapping or localizations can be really fun if you, like, if you create a, a good vibe and not only map, but also have fun. It can be really funny. And people are going to feel better or comfortable to, to join and to come. And collaborate and communicate with similar communities nearby. As I, as I said before, collaborating with other countries, communities that are close to your country is really important. And to be honest, it's easier to collaborate with communities that are close to you because you have similar cultures and it's easier to, to understand each other or to cooperate. So nothing less than excellent pictures and documentations for all the activities. This might not sound really important, but pictures are important because of course you are going to post a blog post or you are going to post in a mailing list or wherever and people are not going to see what's really happening in your events if you do events. But if you post pictures, people are going to see how you, or at least how many members there are, or also gender balance or diversity, everything. So post pictures, it's really important. And documentation, wiki, of course. And great design, of course, is a must. Visual ID is really important. It attracts people and people will feel so comfortable joining. It's really important, like based on your cultural background or history, you have to do research before you start a community in your places. Because for example, in Albania, it was really hard to start a community. And to, it's not that hard to keep it alive now because people joined, but to start it, it was hard because of this individualist oriented society we have. But if you have a society that is like, like oriented to community work, it's going to be super easy for you. Of course, it needs a lot of work anyway. <laughs> so most important of all, you have to be nice to each other. If you have new people joining your community, you have to guide them, you have to help them, and you have to work with each other. And also if people that are not new in the community, they don't know something, you have to support and share knowledge with each other. Like, they need help even if they know a lot of things. So share everything you know. But as I said, as I said, gender balance. Where are women in this community? I don't really have statistics only for OpenStreetMap now, but I have statistics since OpenStreetMap is an open source project. Project. I have statistics for open so for women in FLOSS projects. So a 2002 survey of open source communities found that approximately 1.1% of contributors were women. And the more recent 2013 survey 
found that 11% of plus contributors are women. It's like, it's super low. Only 1.5% of free and open source software developers are women. This is an emergency number, at least in my opinion. Why this happens? Issues, invisibility. It happens in so many cases that people are trying to, to, to discuss about something and they don't even ask for opinions if you are a woman. They don't even ask you, they pretend like you are not there. Or if you give an opinion, they don't even hear it. So that makes women feel invisible. Exceptionalism. Most of the questions, and mostly regarding like uh, to technical things, are only asked to male contributors. Women have opinions too, so they sometimes feel expelled. Gender essentialism and social expectations. In my country it happens a lot that people expect from a woman to just take care of their house or their kids or the family, stay in the kitchen. But women can do things too, can be technical skilled, can, uh, it's this stereotype that women have, uh, have uh, to study social degrees and men have to, like, can study whatever they want, including science degrees, and that's not fair. Women can study whatever they want and they can be really good at it. And sexualized environment. It happened to me and probably to every girl or woman that I know that they have had sexist comment and I don't really want to mention, but also happens that people don't really appreciate what we say or what we do. We want to be appreciated for what we do, not on how we look or what we could do in the kitchen. <laughs> so, I really want to share this. Uh, there are some really good opportunities, not only for women, but also for underrepresented groups, for uh, like to, to have a work or an internship. Is outreach program, uh, it has an internship that lasts three months, it's paid, and it has like an open street map oriented uh, project. And it's also Google Summer of Code, which is a little bit more technical, but is still really nice. So how to encourage new people to be part of the community? Not only women, everyone, how to encourage them? Recruit diversity, not only gender diversity, you need also diversity in your, like, background contributors, age diversity, everything. Everyone should be part of the community, no matter what they do, who they are. Create code of conduct. So no means no, <laughs> again, right? <laughs> People are going to feel much more comfortable to join a community when they know that they are safe. Not only women, of course. Everyone is going to feel safe. Everyone wants to feel safe. So code of conduct, it's really important. Value all contributions, whether they are technical or not. I'm not technical, but I still help the community and have, uh, I've done a lot of work like every other person in the community, whether they are technical or not. And also localizations or uh, everything, also mapping, it can be learned real quick. You don't really, really need to be technical and organize events, conferences, like this one, <laughs> where people not only can go and participate as attendees, but also as speakers. They are going to feel much more confident and you are going to have a more solid community and they are going to share their knowledge with other people. They can give talks. And of course, sharing is like, sharing is caring. <laughs> so it's going to be a, a big step on how to, to create a healthy community and also spread the word. Events are a big help to get more and more people to join the community. And since I gave you some tips that I think are important on how to create communities, I want to share some pictures with you on how these tips are in real, uh, like, the, like the results of these tips. 
in our Albanian community. So this is one of the first meetings we had. I'm not part of it. <laughs> and as you can see, there is diversity. There are some girls and boys, like almost balanced. This is the second meetup. I, I can read it in the table there, it's written. Uh, and I wanna take a moment. This guy here is John Sturdy and uh, he's uh, a member of OpenStreetMap community in the UK, United Kingdom, Kingdom. And he came as a hackerspace and he has been coming as a hackerspace like for the last few years. And he has been giving talks and presentations and he's the one that learned our community how to edit in JOSM. And he has helped us grow the community and develop our skills. And as you can see, it was a success. <laughs> so many people joined, and not only uh, male, but also females. And this is another event. In so many events that we have, different people come all the time. New people, old people, it's diversity always. And this is one of the meetups that most of, actually all of us are women. <laughs> another meetup. Also another meetup, and here we go again. Mostly uh, making new contributors, uh, like teaching them about the project. And this is what I told you about having uh, a good collaboration with communities in other countries. So last FOSDEM, uh, OpenStreetMap Albania, like just few members of the community had a meetup with OpenStreetMap Belgium. And it was like so casual, we just tweeted each other, hey, we are in Belgium, where is OpenStreetMap Belgium? And we just grabbed a beer and had some talk, and now we have collaborations, and it's really interesting. And this is another event we had at the Hackerspace where we tried to, to edit uh, like in the old school way of mapping with field papers. We were not so experienced in this one, but anyway, it went pretty good. And there were only females. And okay, so this is a team, super confident. <laughs> and uh, in Albania, we have uh, this annual conference, which is called OSCAL. Uh, open Source Conference Albania, AKA OSCAI. And we have all the projects that we have in our hackerspace that if we promote. We also have them here and invite people from all the places of the world and they give presentations and talks. Of course, we had OpenStreetMap talks, we had our info booth and of course, community meetup. So one of them is from Kosovo which is close to Albania. Uh, one of them is from Belgium. Here I am. Uh, and John Sturdio is from UK. The other members are from OpenStreetMap Albania and Kosovo. So diversity. And it was really interesting. So many, so many ideas, discussions, and collaborations in the future. This is our booth at Oskal. We didn't really have much swag, <laughs> but uh, we applied too late to have swag for the conference. But uh, we had some leaflets that Cidarella created, and <laughs> yes, and uh, we gave them to everyone. Uh, and it was just an explanation how to join OpenStreetMap and some essential things. And thank you very much for listening to my talk. For every question that you might have. Uh, I think we have some more minutes, uh, and if we don't really have enough time, uh, I'm gonna be around, around for the next three days, so feel free to ask me everything you want. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we have some more time. So okay. if you have a question, please raise a hand and the volunteer has bring you the uh, microphone.
since we have time, can I also add something? It's like... Oh, please. Oh, okay. So, uh, forgot to mention in my presentation that we also have this project in uh, Tirana. Uh, it's the second year that we applied, uh, EU Code Week. And we go in schools, in high schools in Albania, and we have uh, like small presentations and then like really so many workshops on uh, high school students and uh, let them know or teach them how to edit in Wikipedia, how to uh, start mapping and contribute in OpenStreetMap. And it's really interesting because you see new people that join the community and they are, they are so excited to learn about it and to, st to start contributing. So, so many contributors that we have now in Albania and are active contributors, they, uh, they have uh, started like from this project. So, it's the second year we are going to start this, to, to do this project in Albania in high schools. And we now have, happy to say that we now have an agreement with the municipality of Tirana, which is a really big step for us because like just a few years ago, a couple years ago, we didn't have a, a, a community or we didn't even have like a fully mapped uh, map of Tirana. So now we are making an agreement with the municipality for them and they are going to give some of the data they have on their maps so we can start mapping first of all like uh, bus, uh, bus lines and everything regarding the bus stations and, mo and uh, streets of named streets. And further, we are going to do much more, I think, hopefully. So, okay, this is all I wanted to share. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Sorry. So you didn't dance a lot, but you run. <laughs> so. Um, I gave a talk uh, on a similar topic, uh, state of map, uh, three or four years ago. So I was um, explaining how I've tried to build a community in London. Um, and one of the things I said, I take a whole load of photos of us while we're sitting around in pubs, and I try to write uh, diary entries to describe what we've done. So I guess documenting the, the meetups that we have, so really uh, picking up on a very similar idea there. Um, but uh, I have to say that your talk today was probably a much better explanation of how to build a community. Um, one of the things that intrigued me a little bit was that you mentioned that design is important. Do you mean design of uh, a website or design of other promotional material? Or what did that mean? Uh, well, uh, in our community, we have, uh, for example, our own logo. We took the, the OpenStreetMap logo and now we have t-shirts. We don't really have stickers, but probably we'll have soon. I think that it's just important swag because people like swag and want to have something like probably as a memory or just to, to motivate you. So I got stickers from State of the Map and I was so excited. I'm going to have one <laughs> in my laptop or t-shirt. So it's probably important. But also in social media, when you post something like this event that is going to happen, if you have a visual idea, probably it's going to be more attractive, like for, it's going to be easier to attract people. Something that it has like a nice view, probably is more, more likable to, to be. The other side is has a question. So like users that keep contributing and <coughs> remain active all the time, or how do we uh, approach? Uh, keep active contributing to... Well, uh, I think this is more uh, like it's a personal choice. Like not all of them are active, but if you add, like if you, if you make so many people to join all the time in the community, even if someone is not active lately, there are, there are going to be more people. So if one leaves, can come like three or four others, but it's a personal choice. Actually, we just do events and 
invite people to, to join them. So probably it's a push for them to, hey, okay, I'm not, I'm not only going to map there, but I'm also going to have like friends that can help me or I can teach something new. Because in every event we do, people share new information. It's not always the same. Always we learn something more. So probably this is a push for them to keep contributing into the map. Cool, thanks. Thank you. One more question over there. Question. Please speak on. Hi, uh, thanks for your talk. I, sorry, I missed uh, the beginning part of your talk. Um, because uh, we, we are doing some research and preparing some plans to do a similar work in Southeast Asia. Um, but we are not sure like, if we are organizing this kind of community uh, because we, are, we want to contribute back to the OSM. And do we, so when we start this kind, kind of community, do we need to uh, talk to the official like, organization, talk to you guys, or uh, do you have like, local contact everywhere? So uh, this is yeah, our concern. Have, yeah, we have our forum, uh, like uh, the Albanian y user group forum. And uh, like, of course, this is the main channel that we talk to each other. But do you mean like for, for advice or like for help or for collaboration? Yes, kind of like this is our, our main channel. And of course, not only one, but, but few people are going to reply there if you, if you write something. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, one more question, I think. Um, I'll just add a little bit of information on there. Um, so no, you don't need to contact anybody to set up a group. Um, but as your group becomes established, then you can become a local chapter and register with the foundation. Um, and you get a number of benefits as being a local chapter. Um, and one of those benefits is that the foundation is currently setting up what's known as an advisory board, um, where um, they'll invite the corporate members and also representatives of the local chapters to come together as a group to support each other and to share ideas amongst the, uh, the local chapters and, the, and their corporate members. So one of the girls there had a question, sorry. Hi, thank you. Um, I was wondering if the, the lab's activities related to OpenStreetMap were limited to OpenStreetMap contributions or if you w would also like be developing other products based on OpenStreetMap data? Um, uh, till now, uh, we have had some uh, like only mapathons, editathons, and uh, we have had also some uh, map time events uh, that is a little bit more technical. And this is it. We have had also other events more technical. Yes, uh, my fellow friend from, Huck, from the Hacker Space wants to add something. Uh, I wanted to add that in our hackerspace, as we have not only OpenStreetMap as a project that we uh, support, there are only project, uh, other projects. For example, uh, Wikipedia. We can um, uh, combine both of the projects, like yeah, uh, adding it. coordinates on Wikipedia. It's something related to OpenStreetMap, like getting coordinates from OpenStreetMap and putting them to Wikipedia articles. The other one is... Um, uh, Wikidata with uh, connecting wiki with a uh, no, Wikidata article, and um, also we are our community. Uh, some of the members are developing an app about point of interest that is not is is not launched officially yet because it's on alpha testing, and uh, I think it will be soon as a project uh, release there. I think we can combine with other projects too, but for now, we are thinking of it. Thank you. Okay, it's time to finish. Uh, thank you very much, Aisa, and uh, uh, please give the appreciation for her. Thank you. Thank you. 
Arigato. Uh, now the, the coffee time, tea time is to do the uh, noon, uh, 11 o'clock. And uh, the, we have prepared the charging space, the notebook for the notebook or smartphone for the, the next to the registration desk. Uh, you can charge the, your PC on the next 